So this video is just going to be an overview of my thoughts and opinions on Handmade Seattle 2019. If you don't know what Handmade Seattle 2019 is, it's a spiritual successor to Handmade Con. And if you don't know what Handmade Con is, uh, it's a convention for the handmade community. So you can find out more about the actual handmade community at handmade.network. That's their website. Uh, the idea behind it is to make our own software and not rely on someone else's, uh, to basically build it from the ground up and have a complete understanding about how our software is actually working. Uh, and so that, that context will kind of carry over throughout the rest of the convention and kind of explain a little bit of the ideology for most of these things. Some things I simply didn't record. I just didn't have the equipment for some of it and didn't feel like setting up in the back and being that guy that just without permission records the whole conference. So we'll go ahead and start pretty much based on post talks. I'll go a little bit over the talks and my opinions on them. Uh, but for me, most of the value of this actual conference derived from meeting the community and seeing the projects in person. So if we start off where this whole experience kind of started for me, uh, it starts the day before the conference, the Friday. We all set up a bunch of community-led unofficial meetups where a bunch of us could meet and get to know each other beforehand instead of actually waiting for the conference and being limited to that day. We got the opportunity to meet some really awesome community members like Lift Eris and Jesse E. Coyle. They'll be a running theme throughout most of this footage. They're, they're good friends, so uh, it was great for me to meet them. Going out to the bar the night before was actually pretty nice. It was, I would say, about 20 of us. It was this nice split bar, so it's Sonia's Bar in Seattle, if you want to look it up. Uh, they have a bar in front, and they have a bar in back. And so we kind of just hung out and did our thing. And uh, when it got a little bit too loud up front, a couple of us split off and went out back. And uh, we were able to actually have like a good conversation without having to try and talk over other people around us that might be you know, a little bit more intoxicated than us. So I think that was a great plus for us. Um, I would say personally, this was kind of the highlight of the weekend for me. Uh, getting to meet these people that I've been talking to exclusively online in person and in a more intimate setting where you can actually have one-on-one -on -one conversations and not have to worry about talking over people. Uh, that was probably the only time during the whole weekend where you weren't really competing to talk over other people and you could actually have a conversation and not have it be interrupted by someone else. This wasn't actually something that was officially hosted by Handmade. Uh, this was more an unofficial meetup that I had kind of organized, I think, the night before. And I just picked a bar that was relatively cheap and had a decent looking environment on Google Maps and just said, hey, let's meet up here at 8 p.m. So a bunch of people were there super early. Uh, which was nice because I, I got there and it wasn't just me waiting for other people. So I showed up to, I think it was like 10 or 12 people. And then a couple other people kind of drifted in th as the night went on. So I think more of these unofficial meetups would have been nice. Uh, I may have artificially limited myself to that because I, I did have to travel back and forth because I live that perfect distance where I don't want to buy a hotel. But it's an hour each direction, no matter which way I'm going. So the day of, I had to wake up a little bit early. This is one of the few downsides of actually living super close and not just getting a hotel right next door, is that I have to travel. So as someone that is traveling to and from the venue each day, I uh, personally thought it started a little bit early. I think 9 o'clock is a little early. Um, I think the official start time was like 10 o'clock for the actual talks. Um, Either way, if it had started at noon, I think that would be like a post-lunch thing. Like that would probably be a good thing. But that could just be me not being a morning person. Like I am totally fine with that. Um, definitely a minor point. Not not the primary sticking point of this. Um, so the first talk to start off the day was having fun with the Pilot GPUs. It was a really well put together presentation. Uh, basically went over multi-GPU support throughout the last 25 years and different rendering techniques to actually target them. The second talk of the day was by Fabian and he was talking about queues, uh, how they're used throughout different computer architectures and the theory behind them. Uh, he'd kind of gone over some really useful things that you can take away from those theories as well and to kind of improve performance throughout your own software. 
So after the first two talks, we went ahead and had a 15 minute break. I decided to go ahead and get myself a pizza. And I think this was the perfect time for pizza. So the third talk of the day was inventing an instruction set for the Larrabee architecture for Intel. And this was by Tom Forsyth. It was personally my favorite talk of the day. It went kind of into a little bit of nitty gritty, but not too much. Uh, I think he kept it tasteful enough for people that are a little bit more experienced and then kept it introductory enough so that novices will be able to follow. Um, you could definitely tell that he had practiced a lot and had been giving this presentation before. If you can get a hold of his slides, which I think are very worth your time, there's a lot of very interesting things in there. I think a lot of the value came from him speaking and adding those little footnotes. Uh, but I'll go ahead and post a link in the description to the slide deck that he had for that. I think he posted it on Twitter. So if there isn't a link, then I was wrong. So the last talk of the day was supposed to be a DOD breakdown of an object-oriented programming sample by Mike Acton. Uh, it ended up being a simple solution for a simple problem. And he'd kind of gone over how he had made a simple game with almost bare minimum requirements in Unity and how he had accomplished a lot of things. A lot of the takeaway from this was just uh, use the smallest data types possible and look up tables. Uh, I think it was very informative for a lot of audience members that may not have actually done a lot of those things or experienced a lot of those disciplines when making a game on limited hardware or chasing that ultimate performance goal. After all of the talks had concluded, there were only four. Uh, we went ahead and break for an hour and a half lunch. Uh, during this time, pretty much everyone just kind of wandered around the food court, which was the floor below, and uh, socialized and ate food and kind of, you know, got ready for the second half of the conference. So after the lunch break, we went ahead and went into the second half of the conference, which was presentations of everyone's projects. And personally, this was my favorite part of the conference overall. I'll go over some of my favorite projects here and some takeaways that I had from them. Uh, there are a good few projects that I'm not going to mention directly in the video. I don't necessarily want to have a 25 minute video. Uh, and I didn't record all the, all the actual projects. Like looking back at the footage of what I have, I just didn't record a lot of it. So uh, we'll kind of touch on some of my favorites and where you can find their information. I'll go ahead and link to all of the projects in the description as well. Uh, and there'll be a write-up where I'll probably go over a couple of the ones that I didn't talk about in this video. So to build up to the rest of the projects, I'll go ahead and go over my friend Izzy's project, which is IXM. And so it's basically a CMake library for writing modern and flexible CMake files. Um, it simplifies a lot of CMake. It kind of automates a lot of the redundancies out and makes it usable in a lot of senses. You don't have to spend days going through different versions of CMake and it kind of takes away a lot of the stress of build systems and puts it into a relatively easy environment to actually build and integrate with. The next project I'll go ahead and talk about is the Odin language. It was really cool to see Ginger Bill in person, the creator of Odin Lang. He's a really active member on Handmade Network, so getting to put a face to a name is always something that I kind of value really highly. I think it's a really interesting project and there's a link to the actual project itself in the description as well. Uh, by all means, if you're interested in doing low level programming, but don't necessarily want to have to struggle with C all the time, it is a genuinely good replacement to a lot of low level programming languages. So after Odinlang, I had kind of spent some time over at the Our Machinery booth. And so these are a bunch of guys that are making a flexible, really interesting game engine that you can kind of build your own components for, I think is what I took away from it. Uh, it's very modularized. There will be a, a link in the description to their interview as well. I think that was one of the more genuine ones. I, I really enjoyed it. I, I think I caught him off guard a little bit, um, but you can you can see his passion in the interview. And uh, if, you're, if you're looking for a game engine and you don't want to have to necessarily build your own, uh, by all means, check that out. It's still in the early stages, but from what I saw, it's completely usable and a completely viable product. So uh, 
I'm excited to see what we can get out of this and get another competitor in the actual game engine space. I think personally, it will be a very good contender in even just a couple months time for a lot of the larger game engines. And it adds a lot of value to that. I think one of the the bigger things is that it really integrates with teams really well. It's real-time collaborative and it's really easy to understand. It's not some, you know, Unreal Engine where it has all this legacy support and you have to do all this and that and this and that. It's really straightforward. It's lightweight. It's flexible. You can build your own things for it if you are a low-level developer. Otherwise, they have pretty much everything you need already. So this wouldn't really be a Handmade Seattle video if I didn't mention the Melodist. Uh, it was really cool to be able to play the game and see how other people played the game as well. Uh, I think Ryan complimented it very well. He was able to explain why he did things, how he did things, and he actually got some really good genuine feedback from that. Uh, just in the, the couple minutes that I was actually hanging around the booth, he was getting feedback and he's like, okay, he's actually figuring out different design patterns that he might be doing and how he might improve the game in future renditions. And so the last booth that I'll go ahead and mention in this video is my personal favorite, right? This is Risky Business. That's the name of the booth. It was just one guy sitting there explaining his projects. He had built a RISC-V Linux machine and was showing it off. He was explaining how the hardware worked, how he put it together, how he got Linux to run on it and everything, and he was showing a hardware demo. Personally, he was really endearing, and a lot of his passion for the actual hardware came out during the, the short time that I actually talked to him. And so that's why he's my favorite. It's because it, it was very obvious that he was passionate not just about the hardware, but the overall ecosystem and everything about building that system. So after the conference that ended at 6 p.m., there was another unofficial meetup at a bar just down the road, the Queen Anne Beer Hall, if anyone's interested in looking that up. Uh, it was a really cool space, but I didn't end up recording any of it. I kind of just set my camera down and focused on actually interacting with people. Uh, it was a good time. I ended up leaving early. Uh, I spent some time with Lifteris, just hanging out as actual friends, getting away from kind of the noise and having conversation. So I think the overarching value from a lot of this would be the conversations that you're having with the individuals and not necessarily just about the conference, right? Uh, it's definitely a catalyst to have very interesting conversations with a lot of very like-minded people. And going into it, I, I was expecting it, but it was a way more pronounced than usual. These were people that I had been interacting with for years online, and this is my first time meeting them. And I think the conference was pretty good overall. I wouldn't do it again tomorrow or next week. Uh, it's very obvious that Abner had a lot of things that he wanted to, to improve, and I think there definitely are things to improve. Uh, keep in mind, it is the first conference of this series, and it's Abner's first time organizing an event. So I think he did an amazing job for the first event. Not everything went down, the power stayed on, and the projectors worked. So that's more than a lot of first conferences, to be honest. Um, and so during the event, Abner did announce that he's doing Handmade Seattle 2020. I think that event will have a lot of improvements and a lot of the more obvious first time improvements will be made. And I think a bunch more community members, myself included, will be a little bit more involved in the actual organization of the event and kind of help it be a little bit more streamlined. And please keep in mind that these aren't any criticisms to any of the people that were involved in organizing. This is the first time that this convention is being held. So there's going to be growing pains, and I think, honestly, it was really good considering it is the first time that it was organized, and it was organized by people that hadn't organized events before. So I think that adds a multiplier to that. And I think overall the event was really good. It was an event for the community, by the community, with the community, and it wasn't some cash grab. It wasn't an attention grab. It wasn't trying to go trending or viral or anything it was genuine people talking to genuine people so that's pretty much all i got for this video um if you want to go ahead and tweet at me at tech256 or you can watch my live stream tech256 there as well um otherwise i'll see you guys later in a later video